Let's take a look at the compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, and how you can compute it using the formula, as well as the rate and RRI functions in Google Sheets. Now here I have uh, years of data, price data, from 2010 to 2022. And the first price is $5, and the last price is $11. Now we could calculate the average return by looking at the return from $5 to $5.50, from $5.50 to $6.15, and get a return for each one of these periods, or between each one of these periods, add them up and divide by the number of observations. Okay, but that's not going to give us a compound return. Here we want to know, you know, uh, what's the return of going from $5 in the first period to $11 in the final period. So we use this formula. It's the price in the final period divided by the price in the beginning period and that's going to be raised to the power of 1, mi one divided by the last period minus the beginning period. So in this case it's going to be 2022 minus 2010. So it's going to give us 12 observations. 1 divided by 12 here. The reason you have 12, even though you have 13 numbers here, is because you lose the first observation. Remember, you only have 12 returns. Going from 5 to 550 is one return. So you lose this first piece of data. So you only have 12 returns, even though you have 13 numbers. And then after we compute that, we subtract 1 from it. We'll also try the rate and the RRI functions in Google Sheets. So we can find easier ways to do it okay, and make sure that we did it correctly. So let's try the formula first. So equals price in the last period divided by the price in the first period raised to the power make sure you put a parenthesis here. Okay, I did it once where I had one, you know, the hat 1 divided by um, 2022 minus 2010 and what it did is it raised it to the first power and then it divided it by um, uh, 12 or 1 12. So let's see what we have here. So this is going to be 1 divided by 2022 minus 2010 and then I'm going to subtract 1 from here. And I get 6.79%. Okay, I've already formatted this. If it wasn't formatted, you get 0.0679, etc. Alright, let's try the functions in Excel, or I'm sorry, in Google Sheets. They're actually the same as they are in Excel, um, but some people are using Google Sheets and would like to see it in Google Sheets. So in this case, the rate function we put in the number of periods. We know that's 12. We put in the payment per period. Okay, there's nothing, there's no payment per period. That, that's the annuity. We put in the present value, which is going to be the $5 here. I'm going to put it in as a negative number. If you put them both in as positive numbers, you're going to get an error message. And then the final number here, and hopefully we'll get the same answer, 6.79%. You can also use the RRI function. And it's going to ask for the number of periods, 12. Here you don't have to put in the negative. So you can just put in the beginning price and the ending price and we should also get 6.79 percent. So these are three ways to do it in Google Sheets. Okay, Works quite nicely. Um, the formula is fine and it's a good way to understand how it's calculated but actually easier to use the rate and actually the RRI function is the easiest one to use because you don't have to worry about putting in present value as a negative number. RRI simply calculates the return based on um, a beginning price and an ending price. The rate function allows you to put in an annuity.
So if you had a stream of payments, it would do the calculation.